Cast your mind back to Euro 2020, Christian Eriksen receiving life-saving treatment on the pitch before having defibrillator device fitted. We all panicked watching it happen and hoped that this was a one-off. Six weeks later, Besiktas and Congo defender Fabrice and Sakala collapsed on the pitch during a game against Gaziantep Spore and was taken to hospital. This season, I've had a little eye on Saliba and Guendouzi, obviously the Arsenal affiliation. Their time at Marseille has got off to quite a good start. Now, five minutes into the game against Bordeaux, Samuel Kalou collapsed. Very worrying situation yet again. However, he got back on his feet moments later, played on, having just splashed some water over his head, and was eventually subbed off. At the time, I remember thinking... How has he been allowed to play on? Last week, Sheffield United's John Fleck was rushed to hospital after collapsing during a game at Reading. The Scottish midfielder received around 10 minutes of urgent medical care on the pitch before being taken away in an ambulance. The very next day, a lot of people were seen FC Sheriff star Adama Traore going to the ground clutching his chest during their game in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Three forward, Ryan Bowman was substituted against Ipswich in the 35th minute after suffering heart palpitations and had to be taken to hospital. Manager Steve Cottrell saying, the doctor said his heart was beating at up to 250 beats a minute. And of course, we have seen Sergio Aguero diagnosed with a heart problem at the age of 33. So, are we seeing a pattern? Is there something linking them? Has this been going on all along anyway? Are there separate reasons for each of these individual cases that would explain them? Or is it all some kind of complete coincidence? Now you can see from the headlines here that pundits have been criticised by scientists for linking player collapses to vaccines. And leading cardiologists have said that the cluster of collapses in footballers is likely to be just a coincidence. I've watched football for long enough to remember a few examples from yesteryear and I think I can say with some confidence that this isn't a new occurrence but what probably is new is the amount of media attention that each case is receiving. Manchester City midfielder Mark Vivian Foe died while playing for Cameroon in 2003. Fabrice Muamba collapsed during Bolton's game against Tottenham at White Hot Lane in 2012 and former Newcastle midfielder Cech Tiote died in 2017 after suffering a cardiac arrest in training while playing for Chinese club Beijing Enterprises. What we do have in our hands though is five high profile incidents concerning players who are very well known that have happened in quite a short space of time but there have been a multitude in other sports and lower league games. Easy for the lower league and the semi-pro stories to slip through the net but what you are seeing is it happening during live games on consecutive nights with players falling to the floor and either grabbing their chest or shaking. And with millions of people watching, that is going to be discussed. Heart problems are not unheard of, especially in football and on the pitch. And sometimes these things can be missed or for no apparent reason, they can just happen. But people have the right to ask questions and it's... Slightly insulting to people probably to just put everything down to coincidence. This was published yesterday. John Fleck's on-pitch collapse playing for Sheffield United was not connected with the... Quick to point out that Fleck had a separate medical issue which led to his seizure. A source close to the player said John Fleck's issue was not related. They go on to say there have been more than a dozen players collapse over recent months, including Christian Eriksen, Sergio Aguero, Wigan striker Charlie White. Is it Wick or White? I don't know. Sorry, Wigan fans. Being attributed to underlying or unknown heart conditions. Many scientists have angrily rejected the high profile opposition to the especially as the country braces itself for a possible wave of more cases. Omicron. Sounds like a transformer. This cardiologist, Professor Guido Pieles, says footballers need cardiac screening regularly and that there's currently no evidence to suggest heart problems are becoming more common. Aguero had been struggling with chest pain towards the end of the first half and Barcelona's caretaker coach, Sergi Barjuan, said, I was told he was feeling a bit dizzy. I've just learned that he was taken to hospital and I can't say much more until I know. The striker had been having breathing problems and was later taken to hospital to have his heart checked. 
Aguero has been diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat, heart rhythm frequency disorder, which is something that he suffered with at the start of his career. This article is more than three years old. It's actually from 2018, but it is specifically focusing on more young footballers dying of heart problems than thought. FA increases number of screenings for youth players after study finds several players died of heart problems not spotted by tests. Here we have a BBC News article from 2018 saying footballer heart death risk underestimated the risk of footballers dying because their heart stops beating higher than experts thought. Diseases that affect the heart muscle are silent killers. The first symptom can be the heart suddenly stopping. The dangers are higher in elite athletes because taxing the heart can trigger their underlying disease. Adrenaline, changes in electrolytes and dehydration all increase the risk of triggering a cardiac arrest. Now Samuel Kalu also plays for Nigeria and he's collapsed for them as well in training. He says here he was taken to hospital on the eve of his side's first Africa Cup of Nations match, suffering from severe dehydration. So is he just not drinking enough water? I don't know anything, but I do know that it's not normal for, you know, healthy, able-bodied young athletes to be dropping like flies. I've had the pleasure of working at Channel 4 News, Talk Sport, and a whole host of others along the way. And I can say with some confidence that you, your children, your parents will probably never make the headlines. Sorry to break this to you, but no one really cares about you. You are a monetizable statistic. The media do love a star, though, obviously, because they're super monetizable. So it seems like a good time to talk about what's happening to sports stars. In the UK, there's been an increase in heart attacks at home in the last six months. But is this down to people's poor diet and increased stress during lockdown? Are these players dropping because of an increase in the use of performance enhancers? Or are there more players now addicted to sleeping pills than ever before because of an overload of fixtures and burnout or something else? Some people won't want to have this conversation. Hopefully it makes you do your own homework. Science is there to be respected, but also to be questioned. Otherwise it would be stagnant with no progression and we'd know everything. I assure you that I don't know anything, but it is worrying seeing healthy, able-bodied young athletes dropping. The safe assumption to reach here is that there are also thousands of unknown people, healthy and unhealthy, who are also collapsing in similar circumstances. Hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, nicknamed hokum, is a disorder that makes the heart of young athletes operate like that of an 80-year-old. Since the 19th century, more than 80 footballers are known to have died suddenly while playing all young men all otherwise apparently fit and healthy. There is no secret why these sportsmen die or collapse. It is called hokum. In most people, exercise is a key to a long, healthy life. In a very small minority, it can kill. Pinpointing the people at risk is difficult, but doctors are working to try to prevent this devastating condition from causing needless future death. It's important to realise that playing sport vigorously can unmask an undiagnosed underlying condition. So when we see someone having a sudden stroke on the pitch or a hemorrhage, cardiac arrest, we're shocked by it. These events aren't common, especially amongst athletes, but they aren't rare either. Twelve young people under the age of 35 die each week from undiagnosed cardiac conditions, but only one in 45,000 sportsmen will suffer such a death. We are moving into an era where asking questions can get you cancelled and it's no longer even acceptable to agree to disagree. This is about trust, it's about people not trusting mainstream media or authority, government. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're new and be nice to each other. For now though, I've been here with you and this has been interesting.